When you're bullied, you feel worthless. The stories are heartbreaking. I've been called names like ugly or stupid. Kids taunted and teased. I don't like Rachel Garrison, she's fat. Fag, queer. Afraid to go to school. I'm always scared of what's going to happen the next day if I might get beat up. It's been called a national epidemic, a crisis that affects three million kids a year. Bullying has been linked to failing grades, depression, and in extreme cases, even suicide. As parents, we do our best to protect our kids against bullies, and we'd like to think my kid would never become a bully. But with one in three middle and high school students being bullied at school, there's a good chance our kids will see it happen, and we won't be there to help them. Have we taught them what to do when the bullying starts? Would he or she step in or join in? Tonight, with the help of some very brave moms and dads who are looking for a learning experience, we'll turn our hidden cameras on bullying. Dude, that sucked. Throw it like a lamb. Okay, God, the parents will watch as their teens find themselves smack in the middle of what they think is vicious bullying. Whoa! The suspense is seeing if everything we've talked about and taught them all these years, they're actually going to do. I don't want it like that. From aggressive boys picking on the weaker kid Whoa. to mean girls targeting clothes. Wait, I have a question. Are you colorblind? And wait. Do you need a bigger size? <laughs> the question tonight, what will these kids do? The bystanders, the ones who are watching. Bystanders are absolutely the most critical part of stopping bullying. Rosalind Wiseman is the author of Queen Bees and Wannabes, the book of record when it comes to teen dynamics, and the basis for the popular movie Mean Girls. She says most bystanders think they're doing the right thing by not taking sides, but that's not so. The neutral position that the bystander thinks that they are taking when they don't get involved is actually not neutral. It's siding with the bully. So if we want to stop bullying, we actually really have to address the bystanders. And we've set up a test to do just that. We've equipped a conference room in New Jersey with hidden cameras, then transformed it into a teenage girl's dream closet, filling it with clothes, shoes, and accessories. We've invited girls to be part of an NBC News story about teens and fashion. They won't know this is really about bullying, mean girl style. In girl world, one of the best ways to attack someone and bully them is to go after their appearance. So we've hired two actresses to show us how it's done. Play the classic mean girls and bully another actress in front of the unsuspecting teens. And one more thing, we've set up a room with monitors down the hall so the girls' parents can watch it all, hoping their kids would never bully. Our first group of parents and teens arrives. Hi, my name is Ashley. My name is Alishani. My name is Shaquille. Hi, I'm Alexis. All the moms say their daughters have seen plenty of girl bullying at school. Shawnee's mother has told her daughter she has a responsibility to step in. I'm like, Shawnee, you can't just stand by and be a neutral bystander. Either you're with her or you're against her. Alexis's mother thinks her daughter would always help out another girl. She's just such a good friend to her friends. And uh, she, you know, she really cares about people. And Ashley's mom knows what she'd like her girl to do. My expectation is that she will find a way to try to say nice things to the person that's being hurt. That person today is Jessica, an actress we've hired to be picked on for the way she's dressed. Unfortunately, it's a role she's also played in real life. I've been called names like ugly or stupid, and it's hurtful. I mean, there's been people that have vandalized my locker. They've put stuff in it. People just don't care about other people's feelings. One of the struggles is really just why people would want to pick on me. It made me really question who I was. So will these girls defend Jessica's right to be different? It's like kind of disgusting. All right, girls, let's see. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Mean girls do it all the time. Pick on other girls for the way they dress. And today, we've hired a pair of actresses to do just that. Ew! <laughs> I hate it. The victim, Jessica, is also an actress who knows what it's like to be bullied. They're in a room with four real girls, unsuspecting bystanders, who think they're here to talk about fashion, not bullying. Like, what was your point? Like, I don't get it. It's, like, kind of disgusting. 
I'm watching on hidden cameras with bullying expert Rosalind Wiseman and the moms who are eager to see how their girls react. I believe that she would stick up for someone who was being bullied. Hi girls, how are you? We've asked today's show style editor Bobby Thomas to help us out. She says she'll be judging their sense of style as a group as they compete to be part of an NBC fashion event. Every group that I meet with today will have to work their hardest on three tasks. And I would like for you to place those outfits, head to toe, complete looks on these racks. Bobby leaves and our hidden cameras keep rolling. All right, girls, let's see. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Our lead bully wastes no time in ripping oh. apart Jessica's outfit. Oh, like you didn't randomly pick out your outfit, like you tried for that? Even if you took that off and took off the gold vest, like there's still a lot of problems going on. The bystanders seem at a loss for what to do. Wait, I have a question. Are you colorblind? And mostly stay quiet. Just go sit down for like a little bit, like take a break, eat some M&Ms or Think something. Think some things through look at them scatter, searching for distraction, while the bullying makes their moms cringe. Uh -oh. <laughs> Ashley's mother wishes her girl would speak up for our victim, Jessica. So she's just ignoring Jess. That's mm -hmm. disappointing. Mm -hmm. But just when it seems the girls are powerless, one of them, Alexis, decides to say something. Yeah, I think we need to, like, talk for a second. Like, everyone. Boy, like my daughter said, I think we need to talk for a second. Clearly, she has like a different like style of well, that's fashion, clear. and that's fine. Like, even though she does have a different style of fashion, though, like we should yeah. still be nice to her. How are you feeling inside? Very proud, very <laughs> honored that she's my daughter. And watch now that one bystander has spoken, the other girls pitch in. Just like let's be nice to her, because I feel no, I really bad. <laughs> Good shotty, yes. <laughs> and when the bully tries to tease Jessica again, and I think the rhinestones are really cool. <laughs> They all leap to her defense. I think it really reflects your personality. I think it's, it's very unique. That is a nice thing to say. Thank you, Ashley. Rosalind says this group proves how powerful bystanders can be, especially when they band together. The first person to do it is that's the, by far the hardest. Now, a moment of truth when the grown-up returns. Will anyone tell an adult? Is everybody feeling good? Are you working as a group? Yes. 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 What's wrong? Just a little tension going on right here. It's fine. There's some tension. Okay. That's my cue to tell hey them what's really going Hi. on. I'm going to diffuse the tension in this room a little bit. My name is Kate Snow. I'm with Dateline NBC. I tell them they've been dealing with actors, not real bullies, and they all seem relieved. You're a really good actor, by the way. But once I saw in your face was like, oh, like cause they're really insulting you, then I knew that you had to do something about it. Because if I didn't, then it wouldn't stop. And even though it wasn't real, Jessica is grateful for the support. I wish I had somebody at my school like that that would have done that for me when I was getting bullied. <laughs> but our bullies aren't finished yet. This time, we'll make the scenario tougher and more like real life. We'll ask our actresses to try to recruit a bystander to their side. If a bully is complimenting your child or bringing you in and being nice to your kid, if they target someone else, it gets really hard for your child to say something. The nicer them. the bully is, the harder it is to fight back? Yes. What you're trying to do, you too, is trying to get the other girls to be your friends. Will they succeed? I'll be watching with the mothers of Sasha, Kiana, and Sarah. Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm 15 and I like fashion from Gossip Girl. Do you talk about bullying at all? No, we actually, we talk about it a lot. She always comes to me with everybody's problems and we discuss them. But Sarah's mom isn't sure what her daughter will do when she's with girls she doesn't know. As instructed, the actress bullies start off friendly. Those plaid skirts with the white so top exactly and the books in her hand. Think, huh? Then the bully in blue and her accomplice in pink turn on Jessica. I'm like getting a headache from like so much metallic coming off your outfit, like <laughs> the getting dizzy. <laughs> At first, the real girls act like they don't notice. Do like so you go to school like in that? Like when you okay. wake up in the morning, are you in the dark? Then watch as one of the bystanders, Sarah, starts to laugh You're along. Like little, like, like, am I right? <laughs> like, what is she thinking? <laughs> Can you see how they're bringing her in? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, grandma knitted purse isn't going to cut it for a popular girl. And check out this mean girl trick. The bullies tell Jessica to try on an unflattering jacket. Yes. 
Jess, is this yours? you should put this no. on. So then snap pictures with a cell phone. Teenagers know embarrassing photos can be shared in an instant, setting Jessica up to be cyber bullied later. Why are you taking my picture? It's a cruel twist, and yet Sarah looks amused. <laughs> And a few minutes later, she even helps the bullies try it again. You try it on. Asking Jessica to pose for another picture. It's a first. Just hold it. Just hold it up here. I just keep holding it. Hold on. No, I'm not going to take a picture of me. Then something shifts. Maybe the bullying has gone too far. Sarah looks upset. Oh, I feel bad. What's that? She said, "Oh, I feel bad." She feels bad. Sarah is not laughing at all anymore. No. You would have wanted her to to not right laugh away. at all <laughs> right away. Have that look on her face. Yeah. <laughs> when the stylist comes back in, she gets a sugar-coated version of events. And how do you feel about your style as a group? I think like pretty, similar, pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Part, yeah. There was almost no truth in any of no. that. It was just sort of yeah. yep, everything's fine. Everything's yes, exactly. Fine. And that's why principals can say. I don't think there is any bullying at this school. That's right. Time to tell them it was all an act. What you've been doing in here is not exactly what you thought. Bullying expert Rosalind Wiseman joins me and turns her attention to Sarah. How would you describe it? Your me, behavior. Me. So how do you feel about that? That. Like, were you watching yourself and going, "Wait a minute, am I doing yeah. this?" Yeah. And then I what, took what a step back and I was just like, you know, like this isn't right. Rosalind tells the girls that confronting bullies takes okay, practice. So even though this is sort of a mock way of doing it, it actually really, really helps. So she gives Sarah a do-over, a chance for her to stand up for what she knows is right. Action. Silver and gold, really. It's different, and it represents who she is. She maybe thinks that she has her own dignity, and she can win because she's proud of who she is and how she dresses. Okay. All right. Very nice. How did you feel? Better. How did you feel when she was talking to it's you? It's a lot harder. Like, <laughs> There's not a lot of places you can go. Exactly. When you've got somebody who's saying, no, she has the right to be who she wants to be. Wait, I have a question. Are you colorblind? <laughs> We've seen bullying girl style. You go to school in that? And there are more mean girls to come. Vertical is the way to go. Fashion, come on. But now it's the boys' turn. We've rented a school gymnasium and invited a group of teens to show us their sports swagger. They think it's for an NBC News story about boys and athletics. They don't know the gym is rigged with hidden cameras, or that we've hired two actors to play the bullies. You suck, but you're running like a girl. The target this time: a teen actor who appears to have no athletic ability. Get up, man! You're like a little sissy girl. And unlike with the girls, the bullying will get physical. Do you get that? Okay, can you throw the ball like a man, dude? We know bullying is the exertion of having more power over someone with less. Thomas Crever is an educator who has been counseling teenage boys, victims, and bullies for years. He says when boys bully, they try to make the target look weak and often use anti-gay slurs, whether the target is gay or not. What are the types of words you might hear? Faggot. Faggot. What else? Or that's gay. That's so gay, Weakling. right? Weakling. Weak, girly. Girly. Sissy. The insults may make you cringe, but our expert says they are all too real. Those are words that become excellent ammunition to use to exert your power over someone else. The actors work out bullying scenarios. Good ball. Go get it. Pick it up. Making it only look it violent, keeping Dylan safe. Oh, suck! Throw it like a man. To these teens, the real boys, it'll seem as if our target is being subjected to brutal bullying. You look like a little pansy girl. Will anyone come to his defense? My name is Brandon. Hey, I'm Daniel. Hi, my name is Elijah. I'm 14, and I love soccer and track and field. Elijah's mom says her son knows what it's like to be bullied. In middle school, uh, an older kid was picking on him, pushing him around, taking his snacks, and threatening to beat him up. She, like all the other parents here, believes the lessons she's taught her son will make a difference. He grew up in a Christian home, and we have values, and we teach them, you know, to go the right way. I'm curious on how he reacts. Daniel's mom admits she has reservations. Nervous that he's not going to find that internal strength to do what he 
knows is the right thing. Okay, guys, listen up. We've enlisted the help of Malcolm Chisholm, owner of Run, Jump, Lift, a New Jersey gym. He'll play the coach for the day and tell them they're competing to be part of an NBC special. I'm working with NBC, and we're looking for three things here. Teamwork, competitiveness, and swagger. Twelve jumping jacks. Ready? Go. Keep going, guys. I'll be right back. Hidden cameras roll while the parents watch across the hall. They know what they can't do. The bullies waste no time targeting Dylan. Let's go! You're still awesome. acting like a girl. Keep it going. And cheering on the real boys. Yeah. yeah. Watch what uh -huh. he's doing. It's perfect right there. It's a common bullying technique we saw at work with the girls, getting the bystanders on your side. What they're really doing now is setting up the dynamics. You're allowed to make a mistake. Just don't look like that kid over there. <laughs> it makes it tougher to stand up to the bullies. Will it work? Yo, what the hell's wrong with you? What's wrong with Pick you? it up a notch. Pick it up. So far, our bystanders are having mixed reactions. Oh, he is so unhappy. He's so uncomfortable. Look at yeah, him. Yeah, he looks very. He Daniel looks very uncomfortable. Yeah. Elijah just looks like he's ignoring the whole. Right. Thing. Yeah. For now, their sons yeah. say and do nothing. The coach comes back in. Take a breather. And sends them to a cafeteria table, another hot spot for bullying. You gotta pick up your slack, bro. You suck, but you're running like a girl. Watch as Elijah and the other boys look uncomfortable. I think you're the best, bro. You're better than this faggot over here. You're like, you're old. My son's not laughing. He's not. I have too much to say. Look at my son's face. Look at him. Look at his mouth is open. My son's getting a little upset right now. He doesn't like it. But still, no one speaks up. The actors start to chant. And the boys all stare at the table. You, you look gay when you're out there. Yeah. I want you guys to line up at the top of the key. And just like what happens so often in the real world, the bullying stops as soon as the coach walks in. How are we doing, all right? Yeah. yeah. We're doing good. And resumes the minute the coach leaves. But this time, Elijah has had enough. To his mother's relief, he finally speaks up. It's good, it's good. I caught it. He's fine. Elijah just said, he's fine. I just, he just caught it. He's good. He's supporting the victim. Throw it like a man. Now that Elijah's spoken up, listen to the other real boys. Let's go. Positive energy. Come on, guys. Let's keep it going. Come on. There seems to be a shift in the gym. All three boys try to reason with the bullies. Come on, just leave him alone. We're all a team. Mm -hmm. We all just got to work together. You hear what he just said? No one is. He says we all have to work together. And he's definitely the weakest link. But just speak, you know, positive words to him. Yeah, instead like of, get him yeah. pumped. Like, get him going. Now oh, there one, one of them starts and yeah. Brandon yeah. jumped in. Yes. yes. He'll be fine. I told you guys in the beginning. Watch what Daniel does when our actor victim pretends to cry. Yeah. Is he crying? <laughs> It might look strange, but Thomas says he's distracting the bullies, a helpful move in the heat of the moment. Daniel deflected, dropped down, changed the subject. That's actually supportive. So in the end, Elijah took the lead, and it made a difference, just as his mother hoped. How does that feel? I'm happy. I'm proud. Now I go in, but I don't tell them what's going on, at least not right away. How's it going in here? Great. Great. Yeah? Great. It's fun. Great workout. Great teamwork. Everything. How's uh, Dylan? He's doing great. He's trying. Good. He's yeah. doing his best. He's He's trying. Everybody's He's trying, trying their best. Let's see how long they stick to that story. I'm going to tell you guys something. These three boys are actors. And you've been on hidden cameras. And we've been watching you with Boom, your great. parents. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> so does that change things when I say, how was the teamwork? Yeah. <laughs> They're actually friends. Wow. Elijah, what, what were you thinking oh, inside? Oh, my gosh. I was starting to get angry because I was like, why would you do that to it? like an, another person? I thought it was wrong. Good job, Good job Elijah. Guys. Very proud of you. But we're going to do this again. This time, the bullies will pick on our victim in front of the coach. He's running like a girl. And we'll tell him to do nothing to stop it. You got a man up. You're on a team. Will that make a difference in how these bystanders react? Our next group is about to be put in a very tough spot. They think that they're competing to be featured in a show about sports. They have no idea this boy is going to be ruthlessly picked on. Do you not get this? Do you not get this? And this time it will happen in front of our coach, and he'll ignore it. Be a man here. And there's something we haven't told you. Dylan, our actor playing the victim, is an openly gay teen. The anti-gay slurs that our expert coached the bullies to use bring back painful memories. 
He was bullied both verbally and physically in high school. But the worst part, he says, was that adults often looked the other way. Fag, queer. It was really hurtful. But none of the teachers would actually stand up for me and like just ignore the things that were being said in the classroom and ignore the incidents that would happen. I felt like I wanted to change who I was just so I would fit in. Our bullying expert Thomas Crever says Dylan's experience is common. Thomas runs the Hetrick Martin Institute, the largest organization in the U.S. counseling gay and lesbian youth. He says when adults ignore bullying, it's much harder for young bystanders to step in. At the end of the day, the parents, the guardians, the people in authority set the tone. Come on, real quick. So will these boys do anything to stop the bullying, even though the coach won't? Hi, my name is Marcus. I'm Kumel. I'm Brandon. I'm 17 years old and I like to play football. Their parents know it's a lot to ask. I think he'll wait and see what's going to happen. I think he'll just kind of sit back and kind of take it all in and, and watch. Brandon's an athlete and a tough competitor. His mom isn't sure how he'll act today. I know how I would want him to respond. I think that everything he does is genuinely honorable, but we'll see. Run a place, run a place. 15 more seconds. We'll be watching what happens. Of course, the real boys don't know the gym is rigged with hidden cameras or that the coach, the bullies, and the victim are just acting. Yes, Go! Remember, the actors will be using offensive words that are commonly heard in bullying situations. Yo, queer. What are you doing, man? The actor bullies quickly take charge, and our bystanders Yo, remain right quiet. All right, none of that princess stuff, all right? How Marcus looks uncomfortable. Okay, here comes the princess. Guys, everybody. And when the coach comes back, he does what we asked him to do ignore the bullying. He's not trying, he's running like a girl. You got a man up, you're on a team. Okay. Be a man here. All right. He said man up. He's actually allowing that behavior. He's one of them now. Face that way, dude. Do you not get this? Not the get actors this? get aggressive. Get I don't want it like that. And the real boys don't seem to know what to do. I'm sure what Marcus is like, why isn't my mom coming to rescue me out of this awful situation? You wait till coach comes in here. I'm going to tell him all of this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell him how gay you're being right now. You queer bag. Brandon's mother isn't surprised the boys have been silent. When someone in authority sides with the, the evil and side, that's, that's they zip up. Now her son decides to speak, but it's not to defend Dylan. It's just your lack of effort. Listen as he repeats some of what the bullies and the coach have been saying. But if you're not going to put any effort, you're holding us all down, bro. <laughs> Words of wisdom. Brandon fist bumps with the bully. All right, it's time to go. We've been watching you on cameras in here. There are hidden cameras. We've been watching with your moms in the other room. Surprise. <laughs> Were you guys surprised by how the coach was acting? Yeah, definitely. I, I was about to leave. I was saying, I was about to go tell him that my mom, this coach is like unbelievable. Do you think if the coach had acted differently, would that have made you act a little differently? Uh, for me, yeah, I would think so. Like a coach is like the figurehead of the team, basically. He molds the team. But if he would have stopped it, then everyone would have us three would have definitely helped in. Our expert isn't the least bit surprised that the way our coach acted made these boys feel powerless. You set up as an adult right from wrong. That will not be tolerated in my minivan. That will not be tolerated in my classroom. That's our responsibility to provide that reminder. Oh as for God. all those anti-gay put-downs, right the boys say they hear it so often at school it can seem harmless even though it's not. It's become such a large word in, you know, in vocabulary, in everyday vocabulary. It's not even used for gay anymore. Okay, guys. We'll do it one last time, but when the coach sees bullying... Yeah, Yo, you don't got to do like a girl, man. He'll make it clear that it's not okay. That's not how we treat people, you understand? Will it help our next group of bystanders do the right thing? Their parents certainly hope so. Hi, I'm George. I'm Sawyer. I'm 15 years old. I'm Isaiah. I'm 15, and I love to run track. Isaiah's mom describes him as shy, but doesn't think that will stop him. It's not something that he would tolerate to see someone else get, get bullied or to feel uncomfortable. The coach has set the rules. Do I make myself clear? Do you guys understand that? Yes, yes. coach. Yes. No bullying. Okay. Let's see what happens when the boys sit at the table. You're not even trying. You're acting like a faggot. Look, George, look at George's well, nodded just, no. He didn't like that, and he looks, he's looking away. 
and Isaiah quickly tries to change the subject. I'm actually surprised they decided to actually give us like a snack. But it doesn't work. The actor bullies keep at it. Will this get your attention if I just throw me. grapes at you? Cinderella, Cinderella. That's you, Cinderella. <laughs> and a food fight erupts. Dude, I'm acting like a loser. Wow. Isaiah and the other real boys all speak up, trying to ease the tension. Okay, that's enough. All right, guys, guys, we need teamwork, guys, we need teamwork. Your son spoke up. Your son did. He did speak up. Teamwork, guys, teamwork. And we wasted the grapes, man. Those were pretty tasty. You guys, like, grow up. And when the boys go back to playing sports, Isaiah continues to speak up. Ignore him, please. The actor bullies get aggressive, and as Isaiah's mom predicted, he's not going to stand by and do nothing. Try again. Yeah, I'm going to... No, not up there. Not up there. He just separated them. Mm -hmm. Isaiah just put himself between them. That's making me proud. You catch the ball, man. Yo. That's why I'm in the middle. That's a good idea. <laughs> For the first time today, a group of boys is firmly on the side of the victim. But now the most difficult test. How will they act when it appears he's being physically attacked? Yo, pick up the ball. Is As the parents me, hold man. their breath. All right, watch, watch, watch. Isaiah takes a risk and steps between the victim and the attacker, keeping them apart. Throw the ball right! Whoa, 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 whoa. stop, stop. Dude, he's not, stop. Even, he's not even trying. Stop. They sent Malcolm in on purpose because that got a little too hot. Let's find out what they'll say to me before they know about the hidden cameras. What's going on? Yeah, it's all good. It's all good? Yeah. We're all as close as brothers, right guys? <laughs> Some you're, of us. You're a bit of a peacemaker, huh? Yeah, that's me. Then I tell them what's really going on. Does that change things for you? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Isaiah says he wasn't sure what to do. Were you feeling like y you were in control then, or what? I felt I had no control whatsoever. <laughs> but I was going to do something anyways. <laughs> the scary thing about bullying is that it is a lack of control. It's a loss of control. There's the unpredictability. But do you know what you kept doing? Kept trying? Yeah. And Thomas says trying is what it's all about. Dylan, how'd you feel having three guys stand up for you? A lot better than earlier. <laughs> it was a reassuring, made me, gave me hope, I'd say, that there are actually people who will step in and do something about this. Hey, Joe. Does that make sense? Yeah. Dude, We've been watching like kids as they react to the kind of bullying that happens every day. Dude, that sucked. Throw it like a man. Ew. Are you colorblind? And now the bullies have a new target. If you knew anything about fashion, you'd know horizontal stripes are a no. Overweight girls are more than twice as likely to be picked on than other girls. It's been happening to 16-year-old Rachel since fourth grade. When you're bullied, you feel worthless. I was bullied with mean remarks to my face on bathroom stalls. I don't like Rachel Garrison, she's fat. I had no one to really protect me. Even sometimes now I replay it in my head and it hurts every time. As Rachel knows, bullies love an audience and our yeah, mean girls so expert, so Rosalind Wiseman, says those kids okay. who are watching have difficult choices to make. We have to be able to teach our children how to navigate through those very normal but difficult situations. So it's back to the fashion room where we've hired Rachel to play the victim. These two girls are actresses too. We've cast them as the bullies. The rest of the girls think they're here for a shoot about teen fashion, led by Today Show stylist Bobby Thomas. So I really need you to impress me. I'm with their parents in the watch room. Hi, my name's Caitlin. My name's Samantha. Hi, I'm Chanel. I'm Katie. I'm 14, and I kind of like everything. Katie's mother says they talk about bullying all the time. There's been no shortage of conversation about it. You know, just how do you want to live, and what kind of person, you know, are you, and what sort of friends do you want? Our bullies start by cutting down Rachel's clothing choices. So I'll tell you everything I hate about it. And two of the bystanders are quick to defend. If you like it, you keep it, okay? Positive feedback. Okay, so... But when it comes to mean comments about Rachel's size, no one pushes back. Do you need a bigger size? 
This next remark is mean girl speak for you look fat in that outfit. If you knew anything about fashion, you'd know horizontal stripes are a no. <laughs> a big no, a big no. They all snickered at that. And watch how Katie reacts to the bullies. I feel like if you wore that in 2011, um, you might get shot. <laughs> I just, That's just like honest. Face, yeah. Katie's laughing. <laughs> How's it make you feel? Sad. Yeah. I love my grandma, but I would never wear her couch. <laughs> <laughs> What's frustrating, though, is that we've been having these conversations since the day that she was born. So what else about grandma? <laughs> <laughs> so it's not that we haven't had these kinds of conversations. Mm -hmm. I think it's also acknowledging the power of older girls and of charismatic girls and, you know, what that's like when you're 14 years old. Time to tell these girls we've been watching them on hidden camera. We asked Rachel to act like a victim. We hired her, she knows this, in part because she's larger, right? I need honest answers. Was it harder to befriend or help Rachel out because of her size? I would say a little bit. Yeah. A little bit? Yeah. But maybe we felt like we had to go along with, like... Those Pretty two, popular like, a bit. girl <laughs> in the turquoise. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Katie leaves knowing she disappointed her mother, but then she surprises us by coming back to share an insight that is wise beyond her 14 years. When I found out that our parents were watching, was oh my God, my mom's going to be so mad at me. But then I went back and I said to myself, well, I don't want this to be about what my mom thinks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to think about what happened in here and bring that into my real life to make sure that I don't act the way I acted today. How will the rest of the girls act today? Like, vertical is the way to go. It's fashion, come on. We try it again, and in our next group we see a few attempts to defend and befriend our victim. Don't attack her. If she likes it, she likes it. You would totally work it. Thanks. Be nice, everyone. But no group of bystanders is so far able to gain the upper hand. Let me take a closer view. No. Then we meet Lily. Hi, I'm Lily, and my style kind of changes on a daily basis. Lily is a very unique young lady. Lily's mother says her daughter was the target of vicious gossip in middle school, but the experience ended up making her stronger. She's just a little more aggressive. Uh, in her personality. Is that strong personality what's needed to bring the bullies okay. down? Listen, do you think Bobby's gonna pick her outfit or my outfit? As her mother predicted, she isn't quiet. She's just trying to help. Okay, and so Get am I. off her case. I'm trying to help too. I want to win. Don't you want to win? Well, yeah, but I'm not being crabby about it. She gets mad. No, you need to stop. You need to sit down. <laughs> Look at Lily. She's getting angry. Mm -hmm. And matter still. Nice language, daughter. <laughs> but she didn't say it out loud. I would rather have girls be able to verbalize what they're feeling when they don't like something. That's my girl. <laughs> Lily doesn't like the bullies, and it shows. But I think I need to have some input in it, right? No, I, mean, I think I have she really does stories. need to have input. What did she say? She said teamwork. Okay. I've don't know if you don't understand this, but I've won millions yeah, of she's these. won like three That's amazing. Contests. Wow. I bow to you. And when the grown-up comes in to check, okay. Lily does something important that most kids are reluctant to do. She tells it like it is. Everybody feels included in this? No. No. When we tell Lily it was all an act, she's stunned. We've been watching you on cameras in here. They're actually hidden cameras. I was like, you can't possibly treat another human being like that. It's just awful. And I have seen like people been treated like that. Yeah, you snapped. Yeah. I did. I, she I protected like, me. I freaked out. I was like, no! I know. Cut it out! <laughs> For parents wondering if Lily went too far, Rosalind says no way. Teaching our kids to speak out when they see bad behavior is more important, she says, than telling them to act nice. I can't stress enough to parents that Yes, you want to teach your child values about respecting people and being kind. But really, when there is a moment of confrontation, kindness doesn't work because it looks like it's weak to the people who are bullying. Lily's strong response worked, but there was something else happening that you may not have noticed, an equally dramatic reaction on the other side of the room. That's a
amazing. Wow. I bow to you. We've been watching teenagers as they react to bullying. And of all the kids we've met, no one has stood up to our bullies more forcefully than Lily. She does need to have input. It was a thrilling moment for Rachel, the actress who plays our victim. Remember, she's been tormented over her weight in real life. I love Lily. What did she say? She said teamwork. If I had a Lily in my school back in eighth grade, I think things would have been so much more different. But while Lily and the bullies were going at it, something else was happening. It showed us all why addressing the subject of bullying is so urgent. Hey, I'm Veronica. I'm 13, and I have a girly tomboyish style. Like all the parents here, Veronica's mother came to our shoot looking for information about bullies and how to deal with them. She told us Veronica had been teased in the past. She calls herself a tomboy, and that has caused a problem. That has caused some problems? Yes. Last year, I almost moved her out of school, and I talked to the teachers in school, and uh, I think it's gotten better. Veronica doesn't know we're watching on hidden cameras. At first, she's quiet, taking it all in. They look like curtains. Look, is these like <laughs> oh cutouts or really? Like then look what happens. I feel like I told you to stop already. Veronica is getting upset. I need to have some input in it, right? No. I mean, listen, do you think Bobby's going to pick her outfit or my outfit? Like, seriously. We don't know. What's that so hard? You know what it means. Oh, and there's Veronica over, as you see her, she's kind of rubbing her head over by the clothes rack. And then she starts to cry. This is a fashion show. This is a competition. I don't care if you like me or not. I want to win. I think that your daughter is getting upset, and so I think they need to stop. We should go in. We go talk to Veronica and find out that she hasn't told her mother everything that's been going on at school. Well, what was happening to her is happening to me at my school. Veronica is being bullied, and it's not getting better. It's getting worse. It happens to me every day, and I'm always scared. What's going to happen the next day if I might get beat up or anything like that? By the girls? Also by, by, by guys. By guys, too? Like, one guy he keeps saying things like, don't write on paper if you can't afford it. Or, like, he calls me payless, and he says that's a cheap store to buy shoes. I mean, one of the ways that people go after each other all the time is by ways of, like, you have less money than I do. I think that everybody has the right to be treated with dignity. You get the right to walk down your school way and not be treated like dirt. You have this right. Rosalind coaches Veronica with advice that applies to all victims. If she's being physically threatened, report the bullies to the school and demand action. If she's not in physical danger, Veronica should confront them herself, like, this. Say exactly what you don't like, exactly what you want. You've actually got to get the courage. Do you know why? Because it won't stop if you don't. Veronica's mother is upset by what she's heard, but now that she knows the full story, she can help her daughter cope. A few weeks later, we went to check up on them, and Veronica had good news. After I took the advice from Rosalind, I'm like, okay, today's the day. Veronica found the courage to confront the bullies. She says she tried to talk to the boy who was calling her names. He wouldn't listen, but has since left her alone. As for the mean girls, after our shoot, one bully at school ordered Veronica down on the ground to tie the bully's sneakers, and Veronica did something she's never done before. I finally stood up to that person. I'm like, okay, I'm done with you. I'm not going to let you tell me what to do because I deserve more respect from you. It made me feel really good inside my heart. You be good, okay? I feel more confident in going to school because I know if something happens, I'll probably be able to stand up for myself. Rosalind says calling out bullies is one of the hardest things you can ask a kid to do, whether it's victims standing up for themselves or bystanders trying to find the words to make it stop. It's gonna be really messy and it's gonna be uncomfortable and your child is gonna be stressed. It is only that I'm gonna try my hardest to do what's right. And however I do that, that is what I'm gonna be proud of. So girls or boys, parents watching or not, we should all hope that when it comes to bullying, my kid would never stay silent. I would love for people to find their voice and realize that not only do they have a role in ending bullying, they have a responsibility as well. If they can do that, they can do whatever they want in life.